Hey guys, welcome back to Stock and Yandere. So apparently there is a way to access the hidden scene at the very end of the game. Technically, I, I guess this will make it its six and secret ending. So yeah. So at this point where we're supposed to hide with Sebastian Kun, okay? We have to go to the settings, make sure that the sensors are still enabled, then go hide with Sebastian Kun. And as soon as you decide to do that, go back to the settings, turn off the sensors, and let's see where this takes us. I open hype on my computer and start a conversation with Sebastian Kun. Hey Sebastian, how's it hanging? Same as always, and may I say, you look pretty today. Also, same as always. Not that I think you always look the same. You're even more beautiful in some days. Wait, I don't mean you look ugly today, and uh, I... Damn it, screwed up again. Why can't I just play it cool? Aw, thanks Sebastian. Poor Sebastian Kun, thinking he needs to hide his true self from me. He started to try and compliment me like this after I told him I got a little crush on Senpai and asked him if he liked me too. Uh, Sebastian Kun must have realized that I knew, but never dared to actually say it out loud. And he probably stumbles over his own words like that because he wants to use the word fabulous or something, but realizes it's a bit too on the nose. I mean, what other explanation could there be? That Sebastian Kun isn't gay after all? That's silly. Why would he stutter, blush, and look away when I asked him what girl he likes when he doesn't actually like any of the other girls? And why would he start complimenting me after I told him there's someone I like? Boys aren't that complicated, silly. So, how are you doing on the test we've got tomorrow? I think I've got it. How about you? You think? Vivian, uh, what has been happening to you lately? You used to be such an avid learner, but these days you rarely get anything more than a passing grade. Is it because of the stalker outside? The one you said you had a crush on? It is, isn't it? Quickly, I glanced outside to ease my suspicions, but what I saw only confirmed the unthinkable. What? Where did Senpai go? corner is empty. The man who had been standing there just a few moments ago vanished. And Vivienne already knew where he went. Damn it, Vivienne. You shouldn't have let someone like that get to you. He's bad news. It seems Sebastian didn't notice the stalker when he opened the window and climbed in. Nor did he notice it when the stalker took out a gag and walked towards him. Sebastian, behind you! And Sebastian heard me approaching him from behind. He tries to turn around and defend himself, but it was already too late. He tries to stop me, using his death slam as a club, but I dodge his weak swing. Wait, what? I look at the street again, but Senpai is still gone. If he's not there, where is he? The electrical cord of the lab runs out and Sebastian loses his balance. I use the opening to tackle him to the ground. What's going on? Why am I on the other side of the screen? Why is Senpai on the other end of the screen? Where... where am I? Vivienne and Sebastian could disappear from Vivienne's screen as she forces Sebastian to the ground. Only the muffled sounds and occasional briefly appearing limbs hint that the two of them were still wrestling each other underneath Sebastian's desk. No, Sebastian can not resist as much if Senpai is trying to... rape him. Sebastian Kun manages to break free and crawls away. He frantically looks around for a weapon to use against her as Vivienne gets up. No need to struggle, dearest. Just lay down and I'll make sure you will never deny my love ever again. I'll take you far away from that skank. I promise. I'll be gentle if you don't resist. What? You want to abduct me? The hell, Vivian? What's the matter, honey? Am I not pretty enough for you? No, I don't love you, you psycho! What? I'm not gay, you fair- Wait, not gay? What does Sebastian mean, not gay? Oh, but you're wrong. That slut Vivian misled you with her deceitful ways. But I know you actually love me, Sebastian Senpai. You'll realize that soon enough. I'm not gonna let you abduct me, you nut job. I love Vivian, not some sociopath like you. I love Vivian, not some sociopath like you. Sebastian loves me? Sebastian couldn't in love with me, but I thought... So when I asked him which girl he liked, he was too embarrassed to tell me after all. And when I told him about my crush on Senpai, he did get jealous? But... Sebastian Senpai, I remember now. My love for you was so deep. My burning desire was passionate when I thought we couldn't be together. You broke my heart. The moment you turned me down, I was heartbroken. I confessed my feelings to you and you turned me down. Wait, what? I thought you were gay. I knew we couldn't be together. Even if I were to confess my feelings to you, even if you tried to love me in return, I knew you could never truly love me. I couldn't live with that. 
even though it would be a lie. I wanted it to have it. I wanted it to be loved. I wanted to be held. So I convinced myself I was no longer in love with you, Sebastian Senpai. That moved on to another crush. That the burning desire I felt was not towards you. I projected those feelings towards someone else. I directed them towards the first man I saw. Directed them towards... A stalker. He's no vigilante. He's a creep. A low-life pervert. And I knew that. I knew it from the beginning. I even bought Maze when he started to hang around our neighborhood because I felt unsafe. But when my heart was broken, I suppressed those memories and my sense of rationality. I convinced myself into believing that creepy stalker was my prince and ignored all reason. Oh, Sebastian Senpai, how I must have broken your heart with my delusional love for a filthy stalker. My heart belonged to you all this time. I just didn't know it myself. And now my Sebastian Senpai is in danger. I must save him, quick! I quickly grabbed the maze I bought a few months ago and opened my window. My room is on the second floor, but I don't hesitate as I climb out. Good. The stalker left Sebastian Senpai's window open, and fortunately, it's on the same floor as mine. I don't think of the height. I don't consider what will happen if I slip. I don't think of anything, really. All I can think of is that I have to save Sebastian Senpai. I jump and grab onto the sill of Sebastian Senpai's window. A second later, I'm standing in his room. I creep up to Sebastian Senpai. Don't worry, Sebastian Kun. I'll save you from this filthy stalker. I mean, Vivienne. Sebastian gets up and tries to defend himself, but it's too late. Oh, so it turns out that I was both the stalker and the yandere. Okay, hang on. I literally just found out that the game completely changes after you break the game, uh, per se. Like, after that last scene we saw. So anyway, let's get into it, shall we? Vivian. Yeah. Yeah, that's my name. That's the name of the girl Sebastian Senpai loves. The perfect girl next door. Now that I wear her clothes, cut my hair short to be like her, sit in her room. I am Vivienne. I'm the one who Sebastian Senpai loves. With a sigh, I open my textbook. I can't be careless. I have to make sure I took all the steps I have to take and that I have to do still. It might be getting late, but I really have to get to work now. It's a date to deal, Vivienne. Check. Copy her appearance and took her place. Check. Clean the room. Check. Approach my dear Sebastian, pending. I can't, not yet, not with him around. He's right there, casually leaning against the wall, smoking a cigarette. He's right there, that waste of space, some creeper and a potential witness. I don't know what he's doing here. I don't know when he'll leave. I don't even know his name, but I know he's always there, in my way. That creep's very present, it's such an annoyance. Until he leaves, I can't make my move. I can't just take him out though. He looks strong and tough. And most problematic about him are his eyes. Every time I walk past him, he looks at me with those piercing eyes. Other men quickly look away when I meet their gaze and he looks back at me as if he knows. As if he knows. As if he knows. He's in my way. I've never seen him leave before and arrive at odd hours. He's not always there, but when I try to keep an eye on my darling Sebastian Senpai, he's guarding the street no matter how late it gets. Sometimes I wonder if he stands there until I leave myself. I haven't even seen him disprove my theory yet. Focus, Vivian. You're halfway done and the creep doesn't know you're in here. He'll leave soon enough and then you can get to your senpai unseen. I have to be patient. What is he still doing here? It's been an hour already. The creep has to be standing there for a reason. Like what? Does he know? Is he a vigilante? Watching the streets for any signs of danger? Is he patrolling them for me? To prevent me from being with my love? Why are you standing there every night? Standing near this window? Staring nowhere? I mean, I've seen you glance this way before. Glance at that Slut Vivian. Who's always sitting near the window, flaunting her skin. Attracting the gaze of other men and allowing them to ogle her. Stalker. A stalker, stalker, stalker. That Slut Vivienne attracted a stalker. Of course, of course, of course. The old Vivienne would do something that despicable with her pretentious ways. She could never be faithful to Sebastian Senpai. Not like me. The stalker must have been watching her change. She never changed in plain sight, but he could see her take off her clothes if he tried. I wonder if he ever saw it. Well, he's not going to see it ever again. Not now that I'm Vivienne. Not now that the girl that Sebastian Senpai loves is faithful to him. Not unlike her, I will not be showing skin for that perf. 
I won't allow him to ockle me. I won't allow such a creep to touch me and... Duck me? Duck Vivian? Interesting. Of course, he's a stalker and Vivian is his target. If she disappears and the creep who was hanging around her window disappears the same day, he must be the culprit. He must have taken her. And then, I won't need to be Vivian. I can be myself and Sebastian Senpai will fall in love with me instead. Yeah, that's better. So much better. Oh, if only I thought of this before taking her out myself. A stalker would be a good excuse for an abduction. Scapegoat. I can use this in my plan. If I put the blame on him, Vivian's disappearance will be the tragic tale of a girl too sluty for her own good, attracting the wrong kind of attention with her harlot ways. Worth thinking about it? I need to start planning. I have to make him disappear. The stalker has to disappear. If he disappears and Vivian disappears, he's the culprit. And with him gone, all witnesses are gone. How to make him disappear? I have to lure him in. Vivian's parents aren't home. I found the keys to the house. I have sedatives. The answer is simple. The old Vivian has his fancy, and so do I. Forgive me, my love. I'll just have to be as unfaithful as the old Vivian for just a while for us to be together. For us. Slowly, I approach the stalker. He already spotted me and is looking at me. But how? Curious. Suspicious. Alarmed. I'm Vivian. I have to act like her. I stop just a few feet away from him and look him in the eyes. Um, hi. Well, hello there. Why were you inside the house? I didn't know you lived here. I do. How strange. I've seen you here around a few times, but never saw you enter before. Shut up. I mean, it's kind of cold outside, and you've been standing here. So maybe. What are you mumbling about? Would you... Would you like to come inside for some coffee? Oh? You don't? I turn around and walk back home. Hey, wait. Predictable. You're inviting me in for coffee. I stop dead in my tracks and slowly turn around. Everyone knows what a girl means when she invites someone in for coffee. A rabid dog like him couldn't possibly resist such a bait. I am. And the people living there are okay with that. They're not home right now. Is that so? Alright. I could use some coffee. Sickening. Sickening, sickening, sickening. Alright. Follow me. Too easy. I'll let him have his depraved thoughts on me for just a while longer. I'll punish him for them soon enough. I frolic with the keys, try to unlock the door, and disguise the trouble I'm having with a cute giggle as I notice I'm jamming the wrong key into the lock. Which key was it? I'm being too suspicious. Finally, I manage to open the door and invite the degenerate in. He laughs at me as he walks in. I guide him into the living room and he sits on the sofa. I'll go make us some coffee. Actually, I don't like coffee. I'm more interested in other kinds of having coffee, if you know what I mean. The stalker lets out a creepy laugh, where others will find it intimidating or even ominous how that laugh sounded. It only sickens me further. Despicable low life. I'm a bit cold, though. I could use something to warm up. Got any booze? Good. He wanted something to drink after all. That makes things easier. I take the bottle of brandy they've got on display and a set of glasses. With a quick sleight of hand, the sedative falls into his glass as I pour his drink. I hand Senpai his booze before sitting down myself. He looks at me, saying nothing. I take a sip from my cola and wait. He just needs to drink a little. So, um, I need him to talk. Distract him before he realizes something is off. What do you do for a living? You know, stuff. Stuff? I don't really like to talk about my work. Then what do you like to talk about? I've got a hobby I like. What is it? Bird watching. Bird watching? We've got to stand still in a place for a long time, and we've got to be brave on a lot of hot days and cold nights, but I like doing it. Sure. Bird watching. Real subtle, you creep. Senpai takes a large sip of his brandy before continuing. I've followed a few birds around before, and right now, I'm after this little red-headed bird. A real look or two, but she only shows brief glimpses of herself every so often. But to an avid mm, bird watcher like me, those brief glances are all worth it. You really sound enthusiastic about this hobby of yours. This little red-headed bird didn't even notice me, or at least pretended to. But I saw another little bird flutter around the nest. A friend, maybe? Or... 
cousin? A cousin. Yeah, that could be it. So this other little birdie suddenly looked at me, flew over and invited me into the nest. I wonder, was she jealous of the little red-headed bird getting all the attention? Despicable. Or does she have some daddy issues making her act out this way? Sickening. The stalker takes another sip of his brandy. Or is she just a slut who falls for the wrong time? You depraved. I'll... Come down, Vivian. He's already on borrowed time. Maybe. Doesn't matter. I guess not. Now, shall we have a little fun? The glass of brandy goes bottoms up as he finishes it all in one go. Should have saved it more. It'll be the last bit of liquid courage you'll ever have. No. No? No. We won't be having fun. What the hell do you mean? You invited me into your house for coffee. You do so while your uncle and aunt are away. You even wore the same clothes as your cousin to get my attention. It's clear you want me to take advantage of you. So what do you mean, no? No. You do know what that means, right? When a girl says no to you. To hell with this! Do you really think you can tease me and get away with this? I'm going to... Going to... I'm gonna... I'm feeling a bit woozy. Is the room spinning? The soccer looks at a glass in his hands and looks back at me. Did you? I did. I grab the glass from his hand before he drops it and puts it on the table. That took way longer than it should have. Every single this creep glared at me was one too many. Now, what to do with you? There's evidence of you being in their house, your DNA on the glass and some other clues here and there too. Once I raise my own presence here, you're sure to get the blame. But what to do with you? What to do with this bag of filth calling itself human? I guess I'll put you in the same storage unit I rented to store Vivian in for now. And then, there will be nothing standing in between me and my senpai. Now, now that these two problems are out of the way, there's nothing between us, senpai. You'll learn how to love me and I'll move in with you and we'll live happily ever after. Doesn't that sound wonderful, senpai? True yandere and Okay! Yo! Alright. It's way too risky. No, I shouldn't. It's too risky. I can't afford to look at him for too long. If he sees I'm not Vivian. No, I am Vivian. I change my hair. I wear her clothes. I am Vivian now. I mean, if this low life can tell the difference, then so can my love. This is a test. That depraved lunatic is a test to see if I'm truly Vivian now. I am Vivian. I am the girl that Sebastian Senpai loves. I am the kind and sweet goody two-shoes who have never thought bad all her life. Except, I'm not a two-timing slut. That's the previous one. The one who attracted a stalker. The one who allowed a stalker to spy on her these last few months. The one whose inappropriate behavior lured such a low life to my window. Damn it. It won't do. A stalker is a blemish on my identity. Now that I'm Vivienne, I am burdened by a flaws. I need to fix them. I need to fix the problem outside. But how? Without alarming anyone, how do I deal with him? He's a stalker interested in Vivian. Maybe I could lure him in with some of her panties. A degenerate like him would no doubt take the bait. I'll hand hang them out to dry at the window and wait for him to scale the wall to steal them. And once he's inside, it's already too late. Let's hang out some panties as bait. I go through the panty drawer, red or black panties. No, only white ones, of course. Miss Perfect wouldn't be wearing anything else because she's so innocent. Give me a break. No, wait. I'm Miss Perfect now. Yes, I'm innocent. I'm pure. I'm cute. Guess I should wear more white panties from now on for my dearest. Doesn't matter. I will never wear these. They're tainted. Especially the ones I'll use to lure in the creep. I have to burn everything he touches anyway. I sprinkle some chloroform over the innocent white ones and hang them out in the open for all to see. Then I hide in the closet. The old Vivian is in the way and this closet is not meant for two people to fit in, but now I make do. And now we wait. Fifteen minutes later, I hear some strange noises out in the front yard. I hope that's the degenerate. It's getting chilly having the window open in the middle of winter. The strange noises get louder and louder. No doubt about it. Someone's trying to climb in. Slowly, the creep's hand appears on the windowsill as he tries to climb his way into the room. The stalker himself 
heaves himself up and grabs the innocent whites. To my disappointment, he doesn't sniff them before putting them in his pocket. Then he turns around to leave again. Ah. The stalker freezes in place and my blood runs cold. That harlot, Vivian, in her insistent determination to be in my way, moaned in her sleep. That insufferable wrench just alerted the stalker to my location. Should have ended her existence after all. Stalker looks in the closet. With all my might, I will him to ignore the sound. He takes a single step in my direction. Damn it. Damn it, damn it, damn it. A second step. I weigh my options. The chloroform won't work here. I can't overpower someone of his size long enough to sedate him. Not when he's alarmed and facing my way. The roofies won't help me either. Third step. I guess only my third sedative can make a difference here. I hope I wouldn't have to resort to it, but I don't mind using it against this low life. The stalker slowly opens the closet door and a diabolical grin spreads over his face as he looks at me. Well, Missy, you're in for a bad. He barely has time to dodge when I lunge at him with my mace. What the f- The stalker jumps back as I walk out of the closet, holding the mace menacingly. Leave. That was a close one. Leave or I'll make you leave. Screw this. You ain't psyching me out, girl. I don't know why you're in Vivian's room or why you've got that- Fancy ornament. But you're just a girl, even barehanded. I can take on the likes of you, so don't bother resisting any further. You only piss me off. In fact, if you're a good girl and tell me where your friend Vivian is, I might even go easy on you. Friend? I'll never be friends with her. But I'm Vivian. Nice try, sweetie. Very admirable how you tried to sacrifice yourself to protect your friend, but I know you're not Vivian. Sacrifice myself? For her? This low life? Don't take it the wrong way. You're not too bad looking yourself, but even when you're wearing her clothes, you're just not her. Stop ogling me. I am Vivian, and you're a nuisance. No, you're not. The stalker falls silent when he notices something behind me. Wait, is that... Seems like he noticed a body. Hold on, you're a... Oh. I take a step in his direction, and the lowlife jumps back. Hold on. First of all, you're hot. You're my favorite trope. Second, there's no need to kill me, okay? I take it back without beating you barehanded. <sighs> so maybe we can both forget about this and... No. Neither you nor this tramp will get between me and my senpai. Oh, she even uses her honorifics. That's so hot. Wait, wait, wait. Vivian is still alive, isn't she? I'm Vivian. Yes, but that one, the other, the pretender, um, the old one. Yes, the old Vivian. She was the one that moaned, right? So she lives. You could kill her, and you could kill me. I take another step. Could, could, but hear me out, okay? I don't want to die, and you don't want to have to deal with two dead bodies, right? Right, okay, how does this sound? I take Vivian and leave. That way, you don't have to worry about either of us. And because my fingerprints are already on the windowsill, the cops won't suspect you. Not when a known abductor is involved. I get her, and you get your senpai. How does that sound? Win-win, right? Gulp. Okay. Oh, thank God. But if I ever see her again, you're... Yeah, don't worry. No one will ever see her again. You've got my word. I throw the lowlife the keys for the front door. He catches it and nervously scuttles past me to grab the outdated Vivian. It fits him, doing the heavy lifting like the champ he is. Much better than letting a delicate girl like me doing it. And now for the really important part. Twelve days later. He's senpai. How was your day? I locked the door again before entering the room. Ah, oh, you're giving me the cold shoulder again. I thought we were over this. And this place is a mess. If you're standing here all day, you could have cleaned up a bit, dearest. Sebastian. Sebastian senpai remains unresponsive as he stares at the TV screen. I follow his gaze and... Uh, police have stated that whilst the search for Vivian is still ongoing... Chances of her being recovered are now, unfortunately, negligible. Officials are still not sure of the whereabouts of the second victim, Sebastian. However, as the fingerprints of a known abductor of young girls was found in the crime scene, the boy is presumed to be killed after witnessing the crime. As to the situation of the female victim, Vivienne, while the police have not yet released an official description of the abductor, they have revealed that this is not a case of ransom. However, the parents find hope that the deviant method of the perpetrator as it seems that they're vastly different from previous cases. Quotes from the recently released report says, well organized, clean. I turn off the TV. 
Oops. Guess I gave you TV privileges a bit too soon. You promised. You promised you wouldn't hurt her. I didn't hurt her. You promised that if I did what you said, you'd leave Vivian alone. But I did. You said she'd be safe. I said she'd be safe from me. You monster. You. You. I'm going to end up like the others, aren't I? The others? Don't play coy with me. I found your collection of old shrines. My what? Oh, you mean my... Frederick, who suddenly moved to a different city overnight. He didn't even tell anyone what his new address was, not even his closest friends. Alexander, who died of a spontaneous asthma attack when no one was around. I always found it strange that he had one after years without accidents. It was too bad. I didn't know about that. I thought he wanted to grab his phone to call for help. Carl, who ran away from home. Now that one is true. Poof. Gone. It seems like you like those shrines. So I burned them all. Tried to trigger the fire alarm, but... You did what? No, no. It's okay. You're right. I should be faithful to you, and you alone. It was wrong of me to keep their mementos after I got you. I'm sorry. What? No, that's not what I meant! So, you forgive me? Thank you, senpai. You're right. You're all I need. We don't need to talk about our exes anymore. No, you! My dear, sure is excited today. Maybe a bit too excited. Sebastian senpai struggles a bit as I hold the nap time handkerchief under his nose, but then he calms down. I snuggle on his lap and close my eyes as well. Me and Sebastian, forever. Twisted end. Oh no! That's a stupid idea. No, that's a stupid idea. Hanging out panties out in the open, such deviant behavior might tip him off instead. Not even the old Vivian was that slutty. Oh, my ideas have been getting worse and worse. Just thinking like this is going to foil my plans. We should stop thinking of ways to try and make him disappear and wait for him to leave. I've waited months for this chance. I can wait a bit longer. I have to get away from the window for now. I could stare for him for too long or I'm going to screw this up. I have to keep myself occupied with something else. Hmm, but what? I could just go downstairs and watch some TV. That's what normal girls do, right? Is what I, Vivian, would do, right? I could go over the room and look for evidence I left behind, go over all the surfaces again to erase my fingerprints. Or I could look at a picture of Sebastian put on my desk. What should I do? Ooh, oh my god. All right, let's watch some TV. Or I could look at his picture of Sebastian put on my desk. What should I do? Erase the evidence, I guess? Or I could look at a picture of Sebastian put on my desk. What should I do? Okay, let's look at Sebastian Senpai. Yeah, it's a lovely picture. Every picture of my darling is lovely. Even now that I scratched out Vivian's old face, it's perfect. We'll soon make a new picture of the two of us in it, my dearest. Ah, uh, Senpai. How long have I been staring at this picture? Eh, who cares? Eh, it's time for me and Senpai to be together. It's time for me to take her place and take what's mine. I need to be Vivian. Sebastian Senpai loves Vivian, and I'm now Vivian. I must be Vivian. I'm cute. I'm innocent. I couldn't harm a fly. I can't have bad thoughts about anyone, and will always be nice to them. Even about someone as creepy as that stalker. He's the most repugnant being I've ever seen, but Vivian won't judge him. She won't speak an ill word about him, but I can't speak an ill word about him. Yes, if I can do that, I'll be as sweet and innocent as my senpai wants me to be. As kind as Vivian is. Now that I'm Vivian, I can't consider him a stalker anymore. Now that I'm Vivian, I can't consider him a creep anymore. Now that I'm Vivian, I can't consider him a bad man anymore. Even that low life is someone I won't think bad about. Even such a degenerate, I can't call. I mean, I'm still calling him a worthless waste of space. A piece of poo. Degenerate good for nothing. Try harder, Vivian. For your senpai, convince yourself this man is not a creep. For your senpai. Until you can do that, you're not Vivian. Until you can convince yourself, you cannot convince your senpai. I am Vivian. I am kind. I am sweet. I am Vivian. He is good. He is misunderstood. I am. I am not a yandere. I am a normal girl. I am a normal girl in love with senpai. I am. Unknown code detected. Scanning code. 
What do you mean about that? Pinglass.exe. GB fill fluctuation detected in local supergrid D35 boarding exit program board fill. Child inhibitor controls online. Attempting to reinitiate boot sequence. Success. Accessing control nodes. Access granted. No errors detected. Reinitiating pink glasses protocol. Ooh, this is kind of dark. Pink glasses protocol initiated successfully. All calamities resolved. Stalker and Yandere back online. Oh! Oh, cool! Well, um... That was the end of Stalker and Yandere, I believe. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys want to play this for yourself, link to the game will be in the description below, alongside all the other fun links like Discord, so on and so forth. Let me know what you guys thought about this game in the comments. Uh, I would really love to hear what you guys thought. Anyway, I hope you all have a lovely rest of the day, and I'll be seeing you in the next video. This is Lionel, signing off. Ciao.